Hey everyone, this is Caleb. I'm gonna go over some of these circuit problems that we have here. And I'm gonna kind of hope, hopefully give you kind of an intuitive way to go about solving these circuits. And uh, so I'm gonna start here with a series circuit and then we're gonna move on to a parallel circuit. We're gonna talk about kind of the, the way that series circuits behave compared to parallel circuits and do a couple of calculations with that. So let's switch over here. Great, so I have a series circuit here. Uh, you can see that I have something set up. Uh, it's actually set up kind of poorly here, so I'm gonna redraw this. So I have a large line up there and then a small line down here. And all this means is we're, these, these lines kind of represent the potential energy. And so we have a higher potential on this side than we have on this side. So we can think of this as our positive side here. And I'm gonna say this is positive with a potential energy that is equivalent to we'll say eight volts. Okay, so we have eight volts here. We're gonna say that these are red LEDs here and I'm coloring these red just so that we remember, but uh, totally not necessary to do that. You can just uh, write in that uh, you know what these LEDs are. Great, so these red LEDs, I'm gonna write down a couple of things just to remind myself. Uh, the first is Ohm's law. It's great to write down Ohm's law. V equals IR. Second thing that I'm gonna write down is the calculations for each of these LEDs or kind of the attributes of each of these LEDs. And I have two specific things that I wanna write down. And one of those is VF and IF. And VF is my forward voltage. And that is two volts. That's how much each of these LEDs consumes in terms of voltage. Forward current sounds the same, but it's not quite the same thing. It is two, uh, it's 20 milliamps. And I need to change milliamps to amps because this current is measured in amps. So 20 milliamps, I can move the decimal over three places, 0 0.02 amps. That's what I'm gonna use there. This is what I'm gonna use here. So uh, the difference, I guess, between our forward voltage is this voltage is what each of these LEDs consumes. Each piece of your circuit, whether it's a resistor or an LED, they're going to consume a certain amount of voltage. And that is our voltage drop. So we have a little loop here and we can say, okay, we have plus eight volts at the top of this loop. And then across this, uh, this resistor, we lose a certain amount of voltage and we're gonna calculate that in just a second. We know that we lose our forward voltage over this LED, so minus two volts. These are all the same LED type, so we're minus two volts across all of them. It's gonna make our life easy. Great, so two volts, two volts, two volts. So we know we have six volts dropped right here. We had eight volts total and kind of a law here is uh, we have to get to zero volts. We have to get to zero volts by the end of our circuit. So um, two, four, six, we know up here this has to be two volts. And that is the voltage across each of these components. And that's gonna help us figure out what resistor we need here to ensure that we don't damage any of our LEDs. And it's gonna help us uh, ensure that, that, that we get the right value there. Okay. Let's draw this a little bit over here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate out each specific component. And we're gonna do that with these lines here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna label things. I know that by the time I get here, I have to have zero volts. I know that each of these takes two volts and I'm gonna write that as negative two volts. And remember the whole goal is to figure out what this resistor needs to be. But in order to get that resistor, we need either a voltage or a current. And um, we, we have uh, a current, and I'll tell you about that in just a second. So we need to figure out this voltage, and that voltage has to be two volts. And that's because we have eight, seven, six, right there, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We're at zero, perfect. That is what we need. So across this component, two volts. Now another little law that we need to talk about is the conservation of current. The conservation of current essentially says, well, hey, if you have a single loop, all of the current in that loop is equivalent to itself. And that means the current through this component is the same current as this component. 
and all of the components in between. They all have the same current if they are in a loop with each other. And that changes a little bit once we get to parallel circuits, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so we know we have two volts, and this forward voltage, 0 0.02 amps, is what our goal is. We're trying to get down to 0 0.02 amps, and our current limiting resistor is going to limit the current to 0 0.02 amps. So I'm going to write up here, and I'm actually going to write it in green, I equals 0 0.02. And we know then I equals 0 0.02. Remember, they all in the same loop have the same current. And I could write this for all of them. Might as well. We don't run out of current in this. We have to have electrons flowing, otherwise stuff wouldn't work. Or we would be bottlenecking the electrons, right? We don't, we don't have, um, it's kind of like having this pipe with water. And if the water is, if there's no air in this pipe, that would really complicate the process. But let's just assume this pipe is completely full of water. You can't push any water into the pipe without having some water flow out the other end. Similarly, you can't have water flowing out the other end of that pipe without first pushing some water in. Same thing with current in this loop. Okay, so now we have two parts of Ohm's law that are really important here. Our voltage and our current, and now we can find our resistance. So V equals IR. We know our voltage is two volts. I kind of covered it up there, but that's two volts across this specific resistor. We know our current, 0 0.02 amps, times some resistance R, okay? So we do a little bit of algebra here, two volts over 0 0.02 amps, cross out that 0 0.02, that gives us 100 ohms for our resistance, which we solve that out. That's, that's how easy it is, that's as, it's as easy as that. So you are figuring out, well, I know that my current through this whole loop has to be the same. It's super helpful. I know what voltage each of these LEDs consumes, so then that gives me my voltage. And now the only thing left is to figure out our resistance with those voltage and the current that we know that we have. All right, let's move on. We're gonna do the same thing here, we're gonna give us eight volts on this parallel circuit. This is the new one that we're gonna talk about. Plus eight volts. All right, we're gonna say the same thing here. Each of these LEDs is red. I don't quite have these written as LEDs yet, but we'll do that really quick. Great, those are LEDs, pretty sloppy arrows there, but you get the point. So now our task is to figure out, well, what three resistors do we need for each of these LEDs? And well, why do we have three resistors in the first place? Why can't we just put one resistor and call it good? Well, you kind of could, um, but right now we're gonna figure out what each of these resistor values needs to be, and that will help, on, help out later on, especially when you have components with different values here. Um, so, we know that each of these LEDs needs 0 0.02 amps, but I can't just have 0 0.02 amps running through here, right? If I had zero amps running through this one and zero amps running through that one, then neither of those LEDs would turn on. So I have to have 0 0.02 amps in each of them. Otherwise, I'm not gonna get any um, any actual light out of this LED. There's gonna be no electricity actually flowing through this. It would just all be flowing through one and that LED would light up great. But what's the point of that if I can't light up any other ones? Now this is where series and parallel start to diverge a little bit. So I'm gonna write down a, kind of a way that I remember this and series is delta V. Parallel is delta V. I. And all that that means is what we're worried about changing as we go through our circuit here is our voltage. So our current, remember, stays the same in here, in this one that we were talking about. Our current is going to be constant. But our voltage over each component drops. 
And so our voltage is constantly going to be changing through this circuit. Here, we're worried about our current changing and not so much our voltage. So our current is what we're worried about changing because now we have three paths for our, our electricity to go in. And our voltage is only going to drop through each layer of these components. So actually, let me, let me draw these lines here. So we're going to draw lines just like we did last time. I'm going to draw these on each layer. So each of these, they, they count as this, this whole layer here. So I'm going to write my voltage. I know that this spot, this spot, and this spot all share the same wire here that has 8 volts on it. So I know that I have 8 volts going into each of these components. And we're just going to do this in layers here. So I know I have 8 volts up top. I have some voltage drop here. And then each of these LEDs has a 2 volt drop. But remember, we're worried about current changing, not voltage. So this just counts as a single voltage drop across this whole thing is one voltage drop. And what's the voltage drop for our red LEDs? Well, two volts. So that means if we have to get to zero volts by the end here, we have two volts dropped right there. Simple math here. We have to drop six volts across these three LEDs. Cool, so we have our voltage. And then we kind of have our current here, but we have to have three times that amount of current. So let's, let's go to uh, V equals IR. A good old ums law. So V equals I R. We're looking for R here, so let's let's reterm this uh, and it, let's let's rearrange this in terms of R. So R equals V over I. Now, if we wanted to find this just using Ohm's law, I'm gonna ignore this and we're gonna say, okay, well, we know that we have two volts here that are lost and we need to figure this out for some reason. Um, we're gonna say V equals VS minus VD. And what I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that VS is my supply and this is my voltage drop. Okay, so I know that I have a supply voltage of 8 volts here. So 8, and I, my voltage drop that I know of is 2 volts, minus 2, so that gives us 6 volts. So this V here is going to be 6 volts. I'll rewrite this like this. 6 over, hopefully you can tell that that's 6. I think I just keep making it worse every time. Okay, so... 6 over our voltage there. Let me get back over here. But now we have these three paths here. So instead of just writing I, which is our current, we know that our current is three times as big as it was previously. So 0 0.02. But now we have three paths for it to take. 0 0.02 times 3. Okay. 6 over 0 0.02 times 3, which is 6 over 0 0.6, or 0 0.06, that should be 100 ohms. And we, we ended up getting lucky here and just saying that, you know, the equivalent resistance actually ended up being really similar here. So 100 ohms and 100 ohms, um, but that will not always happen. So we have 100 ohms. This is not our final resistance. This is our equivalent resistance. Okay, so that means that all of these, when we do our math and add them up, would equivalent, be equivalent to a single resistor that was 100 ohms. But we have three resistors there. So how are we going to make that equivalent to 100 ohms? Well, we have this handy formula for equivalent resistance for parallel. So I'm going to say R. We're going to call this PE. That is our parallel equivalent resistor. Is equal to 1 over R1 
plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3. In this case, we have three resistors, so we're just putting that three times. You do that as many times as you have resistors. And this is actually 1 over. 1 over that is equal to that. Okay. We know that each of these resistors is probably going to be the same because we have the same uh, current necessary for each of those LEDs. They're the same LEDs, so I'm, a, I'm just going to make these each X. And we'll put that together. 1 over R P E is equal to uh, 3 times this is 3 over X. Right? So if I were to replace this with X here, X here, X here, 1x plus 1x plus 1x is equal to 3 over x. Great, 3 over x. Our equivalent resistance, we can replace that with what we know our equivalent resistance needs to be. And that is 100 ohms. And then we're cross multiplying. x equals 3 times 100. x equals 300. Great. So we know that each of these resistors now needs to be a 300 ohm resistor. And hopefully that kind of makes sense. We are, if we did replace these each with a 100 ohm resistor, um, we would have three times the current that we would need going through the same amount of resistance kind of. So, so now we need to triple our resistance because we have three times the paths that this can go through. So hopefully that's a little bit clear to you that this is three times our 100 ohm resistance because we have three different sets of components here that we're worried about. All right, so that kind of covers the uh, parallel and series resistors. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to come and talk to me. Uh, I am happy to go through some of these circuit analysis examples with you and kind of walk you through the process. Uh, other than that, thanks.